I think all photographers that photograph for any length of time seriously are doing things that are subconscious. I think people are more accepting, yeah. I've never had a problem, to be quite honest. Yeah, I think it's a lot more relaxed. I mean, my camera probably looks different to a cell phone. Um, it's kind of large compared to a cell phone. I think everybody's a photographer now with their cell phones. Everybody's doing selfies or photographing their friends. I just use one lens, one simple 50mm lens, which is, you know, in theory, it's meant to be similar to a, um, the eye view from a human being. You actually do want to allow people to see you. I think that's important. You want to be part of the landscape, you know, not somebody sneaking with a huge telephoto lens around a corner or something. That, that kind of photography doesn't interest me in the slightest. The real world can look just as fantastic to me as a wonderful landscape. For some unknown reason, I find these strange, weird little things interesting. This girl's just amazing. Hair's amazing. Tattoos are amazing. Um, just waiting for the lights to change. You don't need to see the person front on. You get the feeling of what, what she's about, who she is, and that's enough. You know, that's a moment of life. It's probably a COVID thing, you know, keep your distance. Somebody has put um, the yellow markers there. And so I was just ready to photograph that, but I kind of had a feeling it wasn't enough, and suddenly this shadow walked in. Yeah. Normally I'm about a year or least behind, so I don't look at them for a year. I'm either terribly disappointed because they're not what I thought I saw or I'm too overexcited and they look better than they actually are. Nah, that's no good, man. I mean, the things that I photograph quite often are not the obviously beautiful. I'm not going out in nature that often and photographing beautiful landscapes. Social landscape, yeah, well th of course that, that is the main reason I'm out there is to either interact with people or photograph people and photograph things that people are, are dealing with, whether it's what they put in their shop windows or how they dress or what sort of dogs they're walking. Everything is redeemed by good light. A bit of light, beautiful early morning light or late evening light. It redeems the worst of things and makes something quite beautiful. The light does change sometimes within seconds. I have to be constantly looking out for what's happening with the light. But of course, you know, it's the people. There's always people that are different every day. He was just doing a little bit of final grooming of his beard, I think. His brother was standing outside, so I chatted to him and then he came out. These little moments of talking to people um, are important, but I'm not doing it for that. I'm doing it for the image and, you know, the glitzy um, neon that they've got going there, the, uh, the gold colour that they've chosen, the gold brickwork. He was uh, lying in the sun really relaxed on a, on a sort of bus stop um, waiting area. So I went over and uh, of course he started moving. <laughs> uh, and I said, um, oh, do you mind if I, you know, I can take your photograph? I'm documenting New Zealanders and um, 
could you just stay the way you are, please? <laughs> and he was very obliging, so you know, I photographed him. I probably took about two or three photos. What interests me is the way he looked, the way he was very relaxed in the sun, enjoying the, the afternoon sun. You, you don't want to push it too far because, you know, you are interfering with their life. <laughs> you couldn't ask somebody to do that. I would never have the imagination to get them to lie the, the way that he was. Ah, he was just around the corner. After asking him whether I could photograph, I asked him to step back and uh, move back into the light. Um, I mean, I was a bit unsure about asking him, actually, because he was in his own world. And you, you never quite know what the reaction of people are going to be. He didn't even ask me what I, why I was doing it. Didn't ask for a photo. But I'm very pleased I, that I photographed him. I think he's marvellous. You know, just a wonderful human being to come across. I'm pretty careful about what I do with those photos. If I have a photo that um, I've talked to somebody, asked whether I can photograph them as against a photograph that I've just taken with a the person has been unaware. I don't value one over the other. I don't, you know, I know a lot of people do. They feel like you should ask permission. That doesn't interest me, the permission thing, because I know it makes no difference. I know that I'm the one with the camera. I have the power, and I know that I'm a responsible person with that power. I don't want to demean anyone. I just want to show the real world. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what to make of these sort of photos, except for the fact that if these people are ignored, there will be no history of them, you know? And um, like everyone else, I'm disturbed. Nobody's social workers, nobody has money to give away. Everybody's got their own problems and things and um, Sometimes it's nice to chat to people though, you know, just a friendly chat can mean a lot to, um, to anyone. There has to be a certain distance um, just to allow me to step back and do the work I do. It's very interesting to hear sad stories. I'm not a social worker. I can't do anything for them, basically. I mean, I can give them some money if they're begging or I can buy them a a pie or something like that, but that's the, the limit of what I'm capable of doing. A lot of people can't get social welfare or it's so difficult or they get a certain amount and then they're turned down. There's all sorts of mental health problems, drug problems. You know, getting welfare is, is not very easy. I think we all want to ignore it. I mean, I, me as much as anyone else, if I see something lying down on the street, destitute and it's cold and wet, the easiest thing is to walk past. Also, the easiest thing to walk past is the very elderly people, people that are quite frail. Nobody looks at them, nobody speaks to them. They are just as uh, ignored as, as people that are having hard times. If you're a photographer photographing um, social conditions, well, to ignore that aspect of New Zealand is criminal. Instagram interests me quite a bit as a medium. There's no gatekeepers. You can be a curator of your own work. If you treat it seriously, um, you can have a little flow, a little sequence of photos going on. I've got a no cropping tool. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Gives a white space like a you know, pretentious artist would do, yeah like it's framed or something. You know, Instagram has helped my photography in a way. Uh, well, at least it's enlarged my idea of using more verticals than I ever would have before. But no, I just love it. I just love seeing other people's work from all around the world. It's, it's great. And you make friendships too. I try not to look at the past. It doesn't interest me that much, to be quite honest. Um, I enjoy seeing some of the early black and whites when I come across them elsewhere. 
yeah, I see flaws, I see problems. <laughs> see how I could have done it better. I enjoy a lot of them, but um, no, I, I'm more interested in the photo that I'm going to take tomorrow. Photographs you end up with are a much a mirror of yourself, the person behind the camera, that is, as the subject matter. <laughs>